Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. All right, one common question I get is, Megan, are my testosterone levels okay? Are they good? Should I worry? Should I hop on TRT? Blah, blah, blah. People get tested and they don't know how to interpret the results. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys what you should do based on what your testosterone levels come back to. Now, keep in mind, this is based on total testosterone, not free testosterone, not DHT. I'll make separate videos about those. Also, keep in mind that your testosterone levels are not everything it does not account for net androgen status okay you could have low total t but high net androgen status so let's right so this is assuming everything else is equal assuming you have normal androgen receptors assuming you have normal estradiol cortisol blah 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 okay all right let's get started let's say your testosterone levels come back at 50 right under 50 nanogram per deciliter by the way i'm using nanogram per deciliter not nanomole uh whatever so make the conversions so it was nice knowing you right if your t levels come back at under 50 nanogram per deciliter it was nice knowing you uh you pretty much screwed right obviously there are things that you can do watch all my videos all my free content on what you could do to bring up your t levels i wouldn't rush to hop on trt yet usually you gotta address the root causes right so under 50 nanogram per deciliter uh, you got to do something. I mean, that that is uh, female territory, right? That's literally what women have. Women have less than 50 nanogram per deciliter, right? The upper range for women is like, depending on the country, it's as high as 70, but that's pushing it. Uh, most women are around 30, 40 nanogram per deciliter. So if you're under 50, something is badly wrong. Now, keep in mind, this is not the result of just one test. I always tell people, make sure you get tested multiple times because T levels fluctuate. They go up and down within the range, right? So you might be 300 one morning. Day after that, you might be 600, might be 1,000, right? So T levels fluctuate. So don't look at the results of just one test. Always do multiple tests and then see a trend. Look at the average. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, if you're under 50, you're screwed. Next, let's say you're between uh, 200 and 50 right so what the fuck right what is going on again you should not be between 50 and 200 no matter what right even if you account for the other factors that influence net energy status right so find out what the hell is going on you should not be in smeagol territory or uh fialty's territory uh for my guys who watch 300 you guys know who this guy is by the way don't worry about these pictures i just pick random pictures you know just for just for shits and giggles all right, um, next, let's say you're around uh, 400 or 200, right? Around 200 nanogram per deciliter to 400, all right? So we're going to put you here. You should worry, right? You're in skinny go tanks territory. You should worry. You should definitely look at your your diet, your training, your lifestyle, right? Obviously, your sleep, stress management, whatever. Look at my videos or my, uh, my post on the top 10 testosterone commandments. That will quickly let you know what you're doing wrong. Right, but if you're if you're around 400 or 200 nanogram per deciliter, you should definitely worry. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. Unless, again, unless you don't have uh, low T symptoms. Right, if you feel great, then maybe it's just a random time. Remember, I told you guys that T levels always fluctuate up and down depending on what you do, what you eat, how you slap, how you stress. Um, so, if your T levels are between 200 and 400, and you don't have any low T symptoms. I wouldn't worry too much then, right? So everything I'm saying here, it really depends on your symptoms because symptoms are more important than any blood test you could take, right? Uh, unless you're down here, yeah. I, I don't care what, so I don't care how good you feel. You should not be under 50 uh, NG, NG. So yeah, so you should worry if you're between 200 and 400. Again, unless everything else is going well. And again, this is assuming that that's the average of multiple tests. If it's just one test, then nobody cares. Uh, there are times when I get my blood work done and I'm literally down here. And I know exactly why. It's after bad sleep, bad eating, being stressed out by the fuck-ass kids. So, uh, but if it's consistent, then yeah, you should definitely worry. All right, next, let's say you're between uh, 400 and 600. All right, so let's get my man DC here. By the way, this is all shits and giggles, okay? Uh, I could make a video about the whole DC 30,000 nanogram per deciliter situation, but whatever. Uh, so you okay. You okay, right? A lot of guys freak out. Oh my God, my T levels are 450, 550. You fine, right? The, the average is between 400 to 600. Obviously, the average is not a good benchmark because people are unhealthy as crap. Um, but most people will fall between 400 and 600. So don't freak out, uh, you know, even if it's after multiple tests. Obviously, higher is better, but again, it does not factor in 
androgen receptor signaling or density. So uh, if you're over here and you have no symptoms of low T, don't worry, right? Next, let's say you're between 600 and 800, right? Let's say you're in Guts territory. By the way, I should put Guts down here because like I always say, he's stressed out as fuck, but dude gets no sleep, always stressed. But um, if you're between 600 and 800, you're doing good, right? You're doing better than average. Again, all else equal, assuming that your net androgen status is fine, right? Um, because everyone thinks that higher T levels means automatically good. No, you could have high total T and terrible net androgen status. So assuming everything else is fine, you're doing real good between 600 and 800, right? Next, let's say you're between hmm, 800 and 1,000. That's going to put you here. You're doing great, right? You're doing great. Nothing to worry about. Assuming that you don't have any low T symptoms, as always, uh, keep it up, right? You have plenty of wiggle room. Uh, you know, even if you fuck up from time to time, worst that will happen is you'll drop down here or even here, right? So obviously, all us equal, most people should aim to be somewhere here, right? Between Guts and Mighty Mouse. Next, let's say you are between 1,000 to 1,200. Let's pull out the goal. You are in the end of though, right? If you're between 1,000 to 1,200, you know, and you're from this generation, I'm not talking about back in the days, right? But this generation, then, and again, assuming all us equal, assuming your SHBG is normal, your net energy status is fine, um, you amazing you're doing better than 99 percent of the population um and you have nothing to worry about chances are you should have a great diet great sleep great everything um but keep in mind like i said earlier somebody can have very high total t and low net androgen status i see it in many of my clients um, usually because they have very high shbg or they have high total t but for whatever reason the cortisol also happens to be high which is rare but it happens to be high so that testosterone the cortisol ratio is actually low right so that's why I would say you can't just look at one one marker. Um, but all else equal, you are doing amazing, right? Now, let's say you're one of the lucky few that's between 1,200 and 1,400 nanogram per deciliter, right? John Jones territory. I'm going to put this here, <laughs> which is ironic because you should be up here, right? Um, yeah, you, again, nothing to change. And people think, oh, is it possible? Of course it's possible. I've seen it in blood work. Uh, now, it's not sustainable because more often than not, the body will make you do dumb shit that will bring your T levels back down. Um, that's how the body works. The body does not like chronically elevated T levels. It's going to either convert to extra estrogen or it's going to make you do something reckless to bring your T levels back down. Uh, I have a lot of hilarious stories about that. Um, so, yeah, so it's not even a, a level that's sustainable, right, between 1,200 and 1,400. And this is assuming fasted morning T levels, right? Throughout the day, anybody can move up there. Believe it or not, you could really you could go up to 1,200 throughout the day uh, if you're exposed to, like, let's say it's right after training or you saw an attractive woman or you're about to have sex, your T levels will skyrocket. Um, but morning fasted, yeah, this whole tier list is about morning fasted levels, not right after stimulus because that was cue the numbers. So, yeah, you're doing fine. Next, let's say you are between 1,400 and 1,600. Now, a lot of you guys might think, wait, is that even possible? Yes, it's possible. And I've shown a few studies where uh, some men achieved that. But again, it was not morning fasted. It was after uh, stimulus, you know, things that boost tea. So you in UGO tier, 1,400 to 1,600. Yes, you could achieve that naturally. It is very hard to, to get that level fasted in the morning. Um, and most, more often than not, people that have the T levels that high, they will also have a high SHBG. You know, not so high that the free T is crushed, uh, but it's very hard. It's very hard to maintain T levels that high without high sex hormone binding globulin. Next, now this is where things get a little, little suspect, right? If you're between 1600 to 1800, something is fishy, right? You're somewhere between a Neanderthal and stop juice maxing, right? Is it possible naturally? Yes, at the upper limit. So that's like 0.0001% of the population doing everything right. Other people who could hit that naturally are people who, for whatever reason, have very low estrogen. So if they have low uh, estrogen receptors in the brain or they have low estradiol signaling, um, it's definitely possible. Or people that have tumors, people that have brain tumors that are making a pituitary, uh, you know, or the hypothalamus release too much GnRH then it's definitely the what's right there at the upper limit of what's possible naturally. Is it sustainable? Hell no. Hell no. 
your body's gonna find a way to, uh, you know, again, it's all about homeostasis, like I always tell you guys, inverted your curve. Your body's gonna find a way to bring you back down, right? And it's also not healthy to have T levels that high, even if you're natural, believe it or not. There's an inverted your curve to everything, right? So uh, 1600, 1800, yeah, that's very, very, uh, very iffy. Now, let's say for whatever reason, you hit 1800 to 2000. Yeah, I got to put you up here, right? 1800 to 2000, morning fasted, you're taking something. You're taking something. It's very hard to maintain that. And again, that's the average of multiple morning blood tests. Stop juice maxing. And last but not least, if you well over, well over 2000, you in Thanos territory, then yeah, you you definitely on something. Definitely on something. All right, guys, that's it. This is what you should do based on your morning fasted T levels. I'm out.